Kenzie Knuckles has a knack for providing a spark on a volleyball court, a flair for igniting a crowd, with her willingness to go full out to make a play, with her explosiveness on display from the back row. The very traits that drew in John Cook the first time he saw Kenzie play. Well, I remember Kenzie was this undersized outside hitter passing half the court and just competing on a great team. And I just thought this great athlete hitting as an undersized player, she had a little chip on her shoulder, like I'm, I'm gonna show you big girls. She came by it honestly, a grit and tenacity Kenzie credits to her father. If you know me, I'm a little bit of like a goofy, dorky, but like when it comes to volleyball, like super just like crackhead energy. And I think I absolutely got that from him. He was super energetic, super competitive. He was the person that didn't know much about volleyball, but like he was like on the sidelines, like next shot, do this, do that. Like he was just really involved in volleyball for me. He was just my biggest supporter, I would say. Like a lot of daughters, she considered her dad Superman. But at age 13, Kenzie would learn her dad was not invincible when he was diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer. He was super competitive. He was one of those dads, if something was wrong, he was gonna fix it. He wasn't gonna ask for help. He was super stubborn. Um, so it was really hard seeing him um, not being able to help himself and like just so different from his personality. Like he was really weak and I don't know, just the way that he was talking, I've never really seen an emotional side from him before. Um, so I think that was like the hardest part for me. Mike Knuckles passed away on Thursday, April 23rd, 2015. That Saturday, Kinsey drove to meet up with her volleyball team competing in a tournament that weekend. She decided to play because that's what her dad would have wanted. I had like a day afterwards to be with my family, but after that I was like, no, like, it's volleyball for me. Like, I know he would want me to be doing this and he wouldn't want me to let my team down. So I'm gonna go and go to an away tournament right now. I did hide a lot of my feelings in volleyball. I think that just in general with athletes, it's like kind of your security blanket a little bit. It's like that place where like, well, I'm good at this. And yeah, like I can, everything else doesn't really matter because I, I come play my sport and like, I'm pretty good at this. So I think it was like a huge, security blanket for me and I kind of just hid away like a lot of my feelings and I just let volleyball do be everything for me. And she excelled in volleyball, landing multiple scholarship offers committing to Nebraska as a sophomore in high school. But during her junior year, things began to unravel. Playing up for the older division of her club team, it was challenging, no longer finding security on the court. Kinsey made the decision to quit volleyball. It was like, whoa, like now volleyball is also becoming a struggle for me. And I think it like kind of brought up a lot of emotions that I couldn't hide behind anymore. So I think that was a huge reason why I stopped playing. What was that phone call like to Coach Cook when you told him, hey, I'm yeah. quitting this sport? So I called him and I didn't explain much because at the time I didn't have that explanation. I just had those feelings that like I was uncertain of. I was young and I never really dealt with like the other issues I was having outside of volleyball. So calling him, I, I kind of just told him, I was like, yeah, like I just, I don't want to play. Like it's really difficult for me right now. Like whatever, like I, I just don't want to play club. And he was like, K2, like you can still come here. I need you to grow. I need you to get better. Like play high school volleyball. We're going to figure this out together. Fortunately at the time she would talk to me and I was talking her through it a little bit, uh, but she was struggling. And I, at, the, at that time I was thinking, well, we may not get her, but I just had this gut feeling that if, I, if we stayed with her and let her work through it, um, that it was all gonna be okay. And I didn't, I didn't wanna bail out. And, and I know some of the people were saying, you know, you, you ought to let her go, she's done with volleyball. But I just never believed that. That was a huge moment for me, because I felt like like he didn't give up on me. People expect when someone has this talent for like everything to go right and there's like nothing in the outside world that could affect that. At that point when I had that conversation with him, it just, it like lit something in me that it was like, I want to be at Nebraska. Like he cares about me. He's the one person that didn't give up on me. Like this is it. In coaching, you get a connection with people. And I really connected with her for some reason, I don't know why, I just felt a really strong connection to her. But she was somebody I wanted to fight for, you know, and I wanted to help. And I felt a, a connection there that there's something more here 
in this. I didn't know what it was at the time, but I really wanted to coach her and I really wanted to be at Nebraska. And his gut proved to be right. She played for her high school in Yorktown, Indiana, becoming an all-state outside hitter, leading her team to a 4A state title as a senior, but would switch to a new position when she came to Nebraska, recruited as a defensive specialist, earning the starting libero job as a true freshman. Freshman year, I would say I was figuring stuff out and it was okay that I was figuring things out. I was learning a new position and I was like, oh, I'm kind of good at this position again. And it was like kind of like this new thing for me and it was okay that like I wasn't like the best and like I wasn't exceptional at like what I was doing. So I was hiding behind my security blanket again, which was volleyball and I would say Sophomore year, I had all these expectations for myself. Volleyball wasn't really necessarily going great for me once season started. Into her sophomore year, familiar struggles returned on the volleyball court. It was then Kenzie began to experience panic attacks. I literally couldn't hear, couldn't see, like, it literally, like, people were talking to me, but, like, I literally was like, I can't hear you. Like, I have no clue what's happening right now. You can hear your heartbeat, but you can't hear anything else. You can't really breathe. I could see what was in, like, directly in front of me, but, like, on the service line when they were serving, it, everything was, like, black. Like, I was, like, blacking out. It wasn't like I could, like, run off the court or be, like, sub me out. Like, no, I had a different color jersey on. So I was kind of just stuck in my panic attack but also trying to play a game that was terrifying for a long time i tried to like just hide it and not really like show anything i i would say that's a big piece of how i'm similar to my father um i didn't like to show my weaknesses or didn't like to show my emotions very much and um so i tried to hide it and i tried to like pretend like everything was fine, which made it worse. I had to figure something out. And it was not just me that I was worrying about, I was worrying about this team. Like our team worked so hard to be great and I was like, I can't be the reason like that we're not great. That opened the door for me to have conversations with her about this because uh, I, I had gone through in 2009, I had gone through some similar things and I got help for it. And so I was able to kind of just talk her through like, hey, I've been there before. I know what, you, I know what you're dealing with. and and we just made sure we had the right people around her and we were working on those things. And she is a tough kid and she is a tough competitor. So that, that wasn't the question. It was how, how could she learn to handle all this? I thought that being strong meant like not showing any emotions. And that, that was another huge thing that I had to overcome was understanding that emotions doesn't mean that you're weak. You can ask Brett, when we first started meeting, I would literally sit there like this and she'd be like, are you okay? And I'd be like, yeah, I'm fine. I think in a situation like that, it's building trust and like admitting that I got to work on this because, you know, athletes want to be tough. I'm, I don't have a problem. You know, yeah, right. I'm, I'm fine. I call it stubbornness. It's a stubbornness that they have to work through. And then she has to build trust with Brett and, you know, and then get to work. And, and, and that's what she has, has done. And it's, you know, it's a work in progress. It's not something you just fix. You know, it's something, it takes time and you got to work at it like treating an injury. You got to work at it. The summer leading into her junior season, Kenzie knew she had to put in the work addressing the mental side of her game. Meeting with Brett Haskell, Nebraska's director of sports psychology, up to three times per week. And as she was working on her own mental health, that opened the door for her to impact her team beyond just her skills as a player. It took a lot out of me to understand that like succeeding doesn't always mean like I have to be the best of the best on the volleyball court. And I think that's hard with athletes, but I had to realize that I can succeed in other ways and I can be a good person. I can be a great friend. I can be a good teammate. I can focus on school. I can focus on other things and not just put all of my value of who I am as a person into volleyball. The freshman class came in and being able to like explain to them that like I know what you're going through and like I'm here for you and just being able to like stop thinking about myself so much about like what's going through my head and actually try to use like my experiences to help others and ultimately that helped me. I know I'm not a team captain because I'm an All-American or I'm the best of the best, but I know that like I'm a captain because I was there for my team and I was a great teammate. And to me, like that's the big, biggest success I could ever ask for. She was kind of a no-brainer. 
I mean, she's a relationship builder. She takes care of people. She knows what's happening before they do or before we do. And uh, she's, you know, she's, she has a gift. Go be rain. <laughs> you have to put that. <laughs> volleyball, but more specifically Nebraska volleyball, saved me in so many different ways. It saved me because I would have never dealt with those emotions had I not been here. I would have never pushed myself like I have in the past while being here. I would have never had the resources to actually help myself and I also wouldn't have had the resources to understand what I was going through. Nebraska Volleyball in general, John Cook just allowing me to come here, just all of those factors. I think about that all the time. Like. I don't know who I would be if I wasn't here. Like, I'm such a different person than I was three years ago before coming here. I've grown so much with my mental health and I can actually say that like, I'm going in the right direction. I'm not hiding behind those feelings anymore. So I would say it saved me in so many different ways. Sends it back left. Good pass, Jack back, right side, Samity. Block back, hits in, point big red. That's Kenzie Knuckles. Kenzie was in the front row because Nebraska's out of subs, and at 5'6", she blocks the four-time all